All right, so the last thing to talk about with the bonds is how do you amortize um, what's called a bond premium or a bond discount? And there's actually two different approaches. One is called the straight line method, and then the other one is gonna call the effective interest rate method. So we'll start by showing you the effective interest rate method. And again, this is gonna be on the bond uh, premium. And it's actually pretty simple. So as you can see in this problem, uh, this is going back from the earlier example, is that they had a premium of 7,260, that's the premium. And so what the amortization simply does is, is you're gonna write it off over the life of the bond. And in this particular problem, they kept it pretty simple. <clears throat> the life of the bond was four years. So what they did was is they took that premium, divided it by four, and they would essentially say, you're gonna write off 1,815 per year. And what you do is you offset, <clears throat> you write it off as you do the interest accrual or the interest payment. <clears throat> so in this particular problem, the face amount was 100. <clears throat> and I believe the stated interest rate was 6%. So the cash interest payment was 6,000. And once you start to amortize uh, the premium to offset that interest, what happens is it's actually going to reduce your interest expense. So the way the journal entry would look is you would have uh, a credit to cash for that 6%, that's the cash payment on the bond. And then notice you're gonna be debiting the premium account on bonds payable. By debiting that premium, you're gonna be writing it off. And then of course the plug number when you backed into is actually called the interest expense. Now on the next slide <laughs> shows you the basic schedule and you'll notice a couple things and you should take note of all these calculations is number one, the cash paid, that's a fixed amount, that's that 6% times the principal times one year, so that's every year's what they pay. Notice that, this, that what you're amortizing is also a fixed amount, it's the premium divided by four and you get 1850, that's the same amount. And then notice they have this calculation up here where it says A, take A minus B. You're ba basically taking the interest paid, <clears throat> subtract out the amortized premium, and the plug number is basically your interest expense. <clears throat> so that'll help you do your journal entry. Now, in terms of the balance sheet, you have what's called the carrying value. And the carrying value for a bond premium, in this case will be the face amount of the bond. In this case, it's the base amount plus the premium equals the carrying value. That's what they're saying, B plus C. And notice that as you amortize this premium, <clears throat> this premium amount actually starts to go down. So notice you start with a carrying value of 107,260. And then as you amortize 1,815 the next year, <clears throat> notice that the premium goes down by that amount, as so does the carrying value. In fact, once you're done with the bond, at the maturity value of the bond, notice that the premium should be zero and that the carrying value should be equal to the face amount of the bond. And that's how it's gonna work also when we look at the discount. All right, so let's show you the discount situation. And again, in this problem, <coughs> the discount amount turned out to be uh, 6,624. Again, same idea, it's a four year bond. So if you divide that by four, you get 1,656 per year. So that's a direct calculation. We know the interest paid is a fixed amount. The interest expense in this case is a plug number. And notice, because it's a discount, it gets added. So what happens is you, you debit interest expense, you're gonna credit cash for what you pay, that's not gonna change. And then you're gonna credit the discount by 1,656. Again, the interest expense becomes a plug number. You have to add these two together to get that interest expense. So on the schedule, on the next slide, <coughs> You can see how you've got the cash paid is fixed, the amortized discount is fixed, it's a straight line, and then the way you calculate the interest expense is by adding the cash paid plus the amortized discount gives you interest expense. Remember, when you compare this with the premium, the difference is that you would subtract. For the premium, you take the cash paid minus the, minus the amortized premium. For the discount, it's just the opposite. You have to add these two. So this would be your interest expense. So this would take care of your journal entry entries. And then on the balance sheet, when you go to your carrying value, notice you start with the carrying value. It's the, it's the base value. Of course, you subtract out the discount to get to that carrying value. And then notice that you amortize this discount, it starts to decrease. Eventually it gets to zero. And notice when you're done with it, just like the premium, uh, your carrying value will also equal your face value. So, these two schedules, the bond discount schedule on this slide and the previous slide, uh, the bond premium, 
are really two good slides that you should all review and study and make sure you know them very well. Okay. So then the other method, which is called the effective interest rate method, the only thing that's going to change is how you calculate that interest expense. And so for the premium, in this particular problem, the way you calculate the interest expense is by taking the carrying value, again, times the market rate, times the time period. So that's going to be a difference between this method and the other method. So if the uh, carrying value of the problem, I think this was the premium, <coughs> was 107,260, you multiply it by the market rate times the time period, the interest expense becomes a direct calculation, and then the amortization amount will be, in effect, a plug number, okay? And keep in mind, you're still paying the same amount of cash. That 6,000 is not gonna change for it, whether it's a premium or a discount, because you remember, that's the stated or contract rate on the bond. So again, the way you calculate this is, <laughs> you know the cash payment, you would then directly calculate the interest payment and then the amortization of the premium, that's just gonna be the difference between these two. That's just gonna be a flood number. So when you would go to your journal entry, that's the same journal entry format, it's just that uh, the amounts are different. So this is an interest expense, that's a direct calculation. The premium, that's gonna be the plug number. And of course, there's your cash payment. So when you look at this schedule, it looks just a little bit different than the other one. Notice again, cash paid is not any different. Interest expense uh, is not a plug number. This one, interest expense is the direct calculation. It's the carrying value times the interest rate. And then notice the amortized premium is the difference between cash paid and interest expense. So I, I call that the plug number. And then the way the balance sheet works is the same way. You've got the, the face amount. Notice the premium will keep going down. And then eventually the uh, carrying value will, go, will get down to the face amount as well. So again, the only diff the slight difference is, is in, under the effective interest rate method, the interest expense calculation is based on carrying value times the market rate, and it's a direct calculation, and the amortization amount is simply a plug number. And that'll be the same scenario when we look at the effective interest rate for the discount. So it's the same thing. Again, here's the discount, and there's the carrying value times the market rate. That would be what your interest expense would be which is 747, and the difference between that and what you paid will be what you amortize. So again, the, the journal entry is essentially the same. And then let's check out the schedule. And notice on the schedule, you've got your cash paid, which is fixed. The interest expense, which again is your carrying value, that's your starting carrying value times the market rate. You get that number. And then the amortized, in this case, they should say amortized discount. That was just a typo, I believe. But in this case, the amortized discount is the difference uh, between the interest expense and the interest paid. That's why they're saying take the difference. And so notice how that amount's gonna change every time because notice that the carrying value is updated every time you amortize that discount. And again, just like the bond premium, the carrying value eventually will go up. Eventually you'll get to uh, where the carrying value equals uh, the face amount. And also note that the way the carrying value is calculated for uh, the bond discount, you would take the face amount plus the discount to get uh, the carrying value. I'm sorry, I mean, you take the, the face amount minus the discount. In this case, uh, they got the correct calculation, but they should say discount, not premium. So again, you take the carrying amount, I'm sorry, the face amount minus any unamortized discount, and that would equal what the carrying value is. And then again, that will go down over the life once you amortize the discount, and eventually you'll get to that carrying value that should be the same thing as the face value.